Hi everybody, um, tonight I just want to talk a little bit about uh, finding an apartment in Seattle. And um, <clears throat> I came across this uh, map um, and it had housing prices and basically uh, what I wanted to do is try to find an apartment, uh, you know, similarly to what I was paying uh, back in my town, which uh, would be difficult, but uh, I share an apartment with a, a friend of mine, um, and you can see down here it says 550. Some places are 550, and uh, other places are all the way up to 2,700 a month. So uh, I think some of that might be rooms and whatnot, but uh, you can see uh, in general as you get to the south side, things kind of change. Um, so I got a bunch of different maps here. Uh, this shows uh, new housing. You kind of see uh, in detail essentially where the new housing is. And you can kind of see, uh, sorry about this, uh, that uh, there's quite a lot downtown and then kind of some details in here. So I think we can even zoom in a little bit more to show you some details. Um, but this is a great website. Uh, it's this... Uh, Puget Sound Housing Growth 2001 to 2017. And it's uh, Puget Sound Mapping Project, Washington State Department of Commerce. There's also this one that's pretty helpful for uh, understanding the uh, ethnicities of the areas. And you can see on the far right here um, that uh, things uh, have changed a bit. Quite a lot of African Americans uh, kind of predominantly on this side of town. Um, and then uh, you can kind of see that uh, there's some Asians kind of on uh, this side of town right in here. And then here it's kind of centralized to uh, this area here and then maybe over here. Uh, so that was a pretty interesting map. And this is part of Seattle.gov. You can just search for race and race and ethnicity. And it says population density by race categories. So uh, this is a really cool one. This is the... Uh, Seattle Police Department data maps, um, and it's the Seattle Police crime data. And I changed this to the last seven days. So you can kind of see, uh, if you're looking for an apartment, um, basically the crime is right in that area. Um, and I think we can even make this a bigger picture and maybe even uh, zoom in if we can. Let's see. There we go. All right, maybe zoomed in a little too much. So, uh, but you can kind of see uh, some of the details about apartments. So there's a trade-off uh, in general is what I would say is that uh, as you, uh, so basically I'll show you a picture in a moment of all of downtown, but just wanted to kind of go through the data. So, uh, but where I was looking for an apartment was kind of near the uh, University of Washington, which is kind of on the, I basically divided Seattle into North Seattle and South Seattle and then uh, uh, Bellevue um, and then everything in the surrounding areas. So here you can kind of see uh, where the intensive urban areas are. So you can kind of see some of this um, showing uh, basically that. Um, and then also you might be interested in just the medium household income. And you can kind of see that, uh, well, the probably the the uh, poorest income is uh, right university district kind of downtown and then as you get to these uh, you get hundred thousand dollars plus as you get out into uh, so so I would say this map is pretty surprising really because you can see that uh, a lot of people are making between 35 and fifty thousand dollars and that's kind of these green areas and then even less, right? So you get uh, some of these darker areas uh, as you get, uh, or maybe even you see some of this as 50 to uh, 75. So it really depends on the uh, uh, district. Uh, and you can probably figure out what your housing. Uh, and then this is like if you're interested in uh, family lifestyle, where those districts might be. Um, in Seattle, um, and certainly there is a lot of residential houses in these areas, but then you have a trade-off because how do you get to, to be downtown? So, uh, and uh, I, I did see quite a lot of houses all over the place. We're going to get to a uh, bunch more maps still here. So, 
And then this is vacant housing, and I probably should have showed this first. So surprisingly, citywide is about 8.1%. That's one in every 10 houses or so are vacant. And you can see that it might be even one in every four are vacant in downtown. So maybe there's something, in my opinion, not really fair going on, because why is it that... Uh, that just doesn't seem fair to me, right? So some little neighborhoods that might be interested in looking into would be this one here, right? Um, and then in general, you can see vacant housing kind of not as much, but, uh, you know, in general, the vacancies being downtown, uh, which actually is kind of surprising to me just from a person. So a quick little bit about my background is I'm very familiar with uh, New York, San Francisco, Chicago primarily, and then a bunch of other cities around the country. So I, I am familiar with urban housing. I've lived downtown in quite a number of places, or at least close to downtown. Uh, and uh, I'm always looking for the coolest and hippest and just totally awesome spot. Uh, so, and then here is uh, people per acre, so you can kind of see some more interesting things. I don't think that these maps really help this particular map, in my opinion. Um, but it, it, it will if you kind of look at it more carefully. So, uh, And then here's another population density. Um, uh, it's ironic that this Seattle.gov doesn't have as good of one. This probably is also Seattle.gov, but there's you have to find it, I guess. So just make sure you look for population housing estimates in 2010 and you can look at this pause it look at it detailed uh so this kind of shows some fine print here right so you see that uh, there is a lot of density in these areas and then right in here right so with this you might be on the peripheral where you'd find the more affordable housing uh for example here and then in downtown, you know, there's a little block here where you can see, and then this area here, and kind of in these areas. So the population, but then again, the vacancy rates uh, was also important. So, uh, so the, although the population density might be high, there's skyscrapers and all that. So, and here's another per capita income, so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, I was surprised to see uh, that there are some little pockets along the water here of the uh a lake um and then you can kind of see the inner harbor and then some little pockets of wealth here and here and this being pretty wealthy and as well as this and i personally think over in this spot is pretty beautiful just if you look at the seattle skyline and my light is going crazy okay guys uh so yeah i'll have to work on this in a second uh, let me see there we go uh, uh. Well, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, so there's also uh, Washington State Department of Commerce maps. This one was that original one. You can click on this. You can't even really click on that one there, but bring you one of the ones. And then there's a rail map. Seattle does not really have a I, – I, don't quote me on this. So I know Seattle's working on a north side transit, and there's different maps that you can get. So here's a little quick review of just what's going on nationally so you can kind of see a uh, seattle i've lived in san francisco and uh, i would say uh housing prices are uh, i've lived at uh, 16th and market and uh, off of fourth street there in san francisco which is really close to downtown and uh basically my rent was uh i had roommates i had two roommates or one roommate and I would say it's you know if if rent is five hundred dollars in Seattle it might be seven hundred in uh, San Francisco. So why are these numbers so different? And it's a San Jose being higher there by quite a lot. So and San Jose basically being the wealthiest in terms of uh, income. So I, I don't know about all these numbers. So uh, but there's population demographics page moderately helpful i got some of the information here this was actually where we got most of the maps with uh, just showing the uh detail king county website um which is not even the seattle website so but this is the seattle website here and this had the uh i think this was a popular census tract population 
and some other details and there's a, a lot of other places as well so might as well check out the wikipedia page you can see that uh you know seattle has kind of changed a lot since 1940s being mostly white and then today it's about 70 percent white and the next biggest being black at about uh, 10 percent and uh, hispanic being five to ten percent and then asian being a good uh 15 percent so uh, so excuse me. So actually, the Asian population has just steadily increased, and I think we heard things about uh, different uh, things. So this is the uh, actual. Uh, I was just going to kind of load here, but you can see the uh, specs for showing uh, what uh, the racial distribution is. That's uh, if you need a copy of that map. And uh, again, this was another pretty cool. Um, a link just showing average cost of rent and you can see uh, LA <clears throat> being pretty high up there and uh, Brooklyn uh, which I've lived in and uh, I have some friends that live in uh, Manhattan and so on but uh, you can kind of compare it so um, <clears throat> it's really surprising how many houses are available in Miami and I would say Chicago really can vary a lot and it actually is quite expensive in Chicago um, I was actually kind of surprised at uh, prices in uh, Seattle. So that's why I was kind of looking at it as an option. So I was going to transition here to the uh, map. So my first experience with Seattle uh, was I was living in San Francisco, and I had a buddy of mine, and we drove up I-5 here through Portland, and we were on our way to Seattle, and we had a lot of fun in Portland. And I think it was because we didn't really know Seattle that well at the time, and it's hard to park and – different kinds of things, but Portland turned out to be really fun. But today I would say I do not like Portland at all. Um, <clears throat> uh, but a story is pretty cool. There's a lot of alternatives to Seattle. If you're, I really recommend Astoria and uh, different other places. Um, and so the second time I came out to Seattle, I drove along the uh, Columbia river, which is one of the biggest rivers in the world. And then we drove kind of up here and through. So, and then I've also driven all the way around Puget Sound as well. So I'm pretty familiar with the entire area at this point. Um, and I've been through Olympia and, uh, and Tacoma right here. So Olympia is the capital. And I've seen this monstrous thing. And I've flown into Seattle a number of times as well uh, because I there's a plane that gets me for cheap uh, to where I live from Seattle. So this is Seattle. So basically the thing that's hard to understand is uh so where is the downtown where are the cool areas probably what you're wondering most so from this map if you fly in the terrible thing about seattle is this airport is very far it says 10 miles but man it feels like a lifetime uh distance uh it's just when you fly in here uh the times that I've flown it flown in it's usually been up from Portland or something and you land here and it just seems so far up uh, from uh, downtown uh, but uh, maybe you see it otherwise so in terms of the downtown we're gonna zoom in here I have this pretty much to scale so uh, the buildings are about 1.5 I changed the settings so you can and it to me it felt like the real thing when I changed it because I wanted to see the hills because if you're thinking about living here need to think about quite a number of things so basically these days what i've done is i drive, drive in on 90 and it pretty much dumps you you take this exit and you head right into the city on i-5 heading all the way up north to vancouver and uh, the other islands so if you're familiar there's a bunch of other places so but basically the other major road here is i-5 running this way and it is really nice and convenient uh, it's pretty fast to get on and off of Seattle, and then you can kind of take this over to Bellevue if you need, or just this. I believe some of these are toll roads, and you got to be careful about the bridges. Uh, but I believe this one is free here on 90, so, and I-5 is not uh, really a toll road as well. So, But, uh, but in general, uh, there's a massive industrial zone here on the south side, which is kind of great for jobs but uh at the same time there's not a whole lot of housing but there is some new development heading in here and if you take the ferry 
which I think is one way is for free and the other way you have to pay, I think like $8 or something just to walk on. It's really worth it because you can take the ferry. My favorite one is the Bremerton one. I didn't actually take the Brain Bridge one yet because I wanted to kind of see what it was like. But you can take this ferry all the way out here and then you can get a great view for just what it looks like in this harbor and you can see different types of places to live. And my conclusion is that it's just hard. So I, I hate driving. So I, I really feel that uh, if you're going to drive to work and you're going to live way out here, forget about it. We're not even going to talk about that kind of stuff. You'll basically lose your job over the frustration of sitting in a traffic jam. And But there are certain roads that are super fast, so 90 and I-5. But once you get north, this is a major traffic jam area. And I'm sure it's also in here too as well, but maybe maybe pretty fast on this part. But there's other parts that just can be terrifying. So I'm not an expert on traffic, but you can look at traffic, and we might look at that in a moment. But this is primarily just a study of where to find housing. So uh, I stayed right down here. My favorite part was I just wanted to get a hotel. So I got a hotel here for about 100 bucks a night and did that to see. met with my friend. He met up with me, and there's there was even free parking that night there. So he could just pull in and we could talk. And uh, he said that he's lived in Seattle area for like almost 20 years now. So can't believe it. Uh, but uh, but in general, uh, I'm going to zoom in here in a second. But so take a very careful look at what's going on. This is a massive lake. My friend drank the water here and was like, whoa, it's fresh water. So even though this is connected, there's a lock here somewhere. I think it's right in here somewhere. Um, so the water is actually fresh water on this side, um, but this is salt water and out uh, into Puget Sound, and you cannot even see the end of this. It is so big, uh, but in some ways it's actually kind of small as well. So, but there's all kinds of housing places and options. So I would say this is a good 45 minutes to just take this ferry, but it, it, it Bremerton is a very interesting spot um, for housing. But honestly, it's as pricey or even more pricey some of the stuff that we're going to look at. So uh, so I might switch back here in a moment to look at prices. But in general, my criteria for this is I want to find something very cheap. I'm looking for like $500 a month, maybe share, do a roommate kind of situation, $750 at the very most. And, you know, I'm basically wanting to live right downtown as close as possible. Um, and you know there's uh so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in here so super nice houses all on the coast here i would say this northern side i'm not as familiar with i just couldn't really see all the details but it is nice but it's just a real pain to get into downtown and so i'm pretty much ruling that kind of stuff out and as you see here is that uh so there's like basically this uh Pike's Place Market uh, right down to here. I think I'm going to show right here. This is kind of like the cool uh, central place just to grab sandwiches and stuff. And um, everything else downtown pretty much shuts down. It's pretty quiet. I walked from here over to the Space Needle, which is in here. We were staying, I think, right in here somewhere. Great little view. You can. I always wanted to share a boat with a friend and, you know, maybe – figure that out here in Seattle, but uh, there's a lot of little docks here, which is great. Um, so there's really no boating options on this side if you look carefully, um, but they do have, uh, but anyway, so make a long story short, in terms of housing, uh, that's what I'm thinking about. So uh, like I'm basically considering walkable, like here to here at the most, right? So like I, I would say, you, you know, here to here is a comfortable walk, and then here gets to be a little bit from here, like, because I was right over here, I think. So I'd say it's, you know, it's a comfortable walk here to the Space Needle and back, you know, 20 minutes or so. And then you're talking 40 minutes and you're talking a good hour to just, you know, walk across of all of this area. And that right there, if you zoom out, you can see 5,000 feet. So this is about one mile roughly so i just want to see the mountains so you can see the hills so the hills make it quite challenging in some areas in here so and it's really hard to see but we're gonna look at this so you can kind of see it doesn't look too hilly but it's a big 
even this stuff in here can be pretty hilly right into the waterfront. So, uh, for me personally, what happened is that, uh, so there's, there's really, this has all been kind of like, uh, built into uh like off lower level office buildings and honestly a lot of the cooler offices and a lot of stuff there so the one thing i really liked about housing on the south side is that all these ferries come in and it's really super affordable but the crime map if you notice was pretty bad over in here so in terms of the most affordable housing it's basically back in here right now next to the university and then there's like a spot right over here. So I'm going to see, I'm going to pause this for a second and show you the uh, other map. Um, so I'd say this map is uh, fairly legit um, with some exceptions. So, you know, like right downtown, there is some crime in here. And uh, if you looked at that little triangle, you can see there's a little spot here that's pretty affordable and so on. Um, now these yellow areas are pretty much the max I could really go for, right? So, and then in here, but really these these numbers are not super accurate because basically they call this International District in Chinatown. So like right over there, uh, it's basically right in here. And this starts to be pretty industrial towards, uh, you know, there's a lot of shipping stuff. Um, but uh, Basically, in terms of large number of houses available, it was basically back in here. And I'll try to show you a map of that in a second, but let me switch back. So uh, so, so basically what I want to do next is kind of show you a couple um, just like housing maps showing just current property prices. I'm going to filter it basically under 750 or maybe even less and see what we can uh, actually see here. Okay, so uh, I'm back here and I just wanna show you. So if you go to uh, Marketplace on Facebook, which is becoming like fastly the, the way to find an apartment, um, Craigslist kind of used to be, um, and you can kind of see um, some of the uh, apartments here. So you basically got a lot of apartments right here downtown quite a number here in uh, Tacoma and then you can kind of see uh, all the way down to Olympia a bit so uh, but honestly for what I've been looking for you're gonna see right here so basically I just set uh, this price to be uh, I'm gonna do it a little bit larger let's do 10 miles just to be uh, change this so that's a 10 mile radius and you can kind of see what's going on right so you can see that uh, you know there's like 31 apartments here, 21 there, and when we zoom in, maybe it's even going to change this a little bit better. So again, you can start to see a couple of them showing up here, Capitol Hill. So the question here is that that I thought about kind of carefully is that so like if you go back to this other map on the uh, this so capitol hill is this area and honestly it's a lot of downtown crowd that can't afford to live downtown and just comes over here and then they kind of made their own little district up here and it's not really my scene because i'd rather just like live really close to downtown and be able to walk over to pike's place market but downtown becomes so quiet at night and then maybe this is where stuff starts to happen so I'm going to add something else here. So if you do this place places, I think I can add everything. So it's going to load up here and start to load all the little stores and shops. So you can start to see where the uh, essentially the nightlife is. And you can kind of see it's right in here. And then, of course, there's just a ton here. So basically with the downtown stuff, I mean, I, I, I don't mind it, the downtown lifestyle sometimes. So uh it just doesn't really feel it's a little bit different so but the thing is is that i really like the academic lifestyle so there's there's this whole other area here you can see there's kind of a lower queen and kind of a collection of places to eat here it's just really nice to be able to walk outside like one or two or three blocks and have a cafe and some other things but with this so here's the catch right so when you look at this 
Uh, so essentially downtown has tons of stuff, but switch off the places and you can see there's only really two downtowns. So it's basically here and then right over by the university is kind of a collection of buildings and there's kind of like a whole separate district here as well as some stuff along the waterfront in this Lake Union. So I'd say, you know, if you're looking for something, basically this is downtown and then there's kind of a spot over here. These Wikipedia links I love just so you could see, um, what does this say? Seattle Pacific University and then you got University of Washington, the stadium and uh, a couple TV towers and uh, anyway yes yeah, so that's the space needle so um but <clears throat> you know anything downtown could be great this is a hill to walk up and you can see if i turn this it's uh it's kind of a it can kind of be a pretty serious hill and this is pretty much locked up over on this side so if you're you know and again uh walking from here this is a reasonable walk, like from here all the way over to here. It got dark on this side, and I kind of got scared and walked back. But this is like pretty much a walk, in my opinion. So if you put yourself here, you can pretty much radiate a radius of, uh, in the areas, right? So that was kind of what I was looking at as one option personally, just because I liked the academic side. But, uh, for job situation there's definitely here and here so let's switch back to the other view and see what we can find and um this is just uh the latest from 2021 and uh we're gonna see some of that data load here i'm gonna zoom in on this and see where these apartments are so we can see some more data here and it's going to keep changing as we zoom in so again you can see maybe there's way more apartments here but i need to set the price to my 750 because i'm really going on the affordability side here for this so uh and uh now it comes up with a whole lot less and you can see again that most of the options are still by the university and then kind of a couple tight spots down here. So I'm gonna start by this because I think we can, now they sometimes show the addresses and sometimes not. I don't really like the way they do this, but it's an algorithm basically calculating this out. So part of the problem is when they has like a one hit here, we can kind of look at those. So there might be seven in the, all in the same units or just someone that really posted a ton for a particular neighborhood. So, um, You'd have to look at specifically what they are um, there. Um, so we can try to zoom in a little bit. So you can kind of see where this is going. So it's kind of got this spot here. And uh, obviously, um, you know, there's different pluses and minuses. So there is definitely a road noise question there. Um, whether or not that can be a deal, whether you can deal with that or not. So, um, but... Uh, let's just zoom out to look again at the kind of the structure of the rental market so actually craigslist is pretty decent for just studying this structure so i mean uh, there's a number of ways to think about this you know i'm i'm kind of just trying to uh, contact some people and then uh, make sure that i'm pretty good like them and then uh, they like me and just think about some things so i like this kind of just shows a lot of uh, numbers on these things so we can kind of look at this here a little bit so university district was by far had a lot but again it's just too far to walk um so if you are thinking about downtown and i do i just like being really part of the downtown community but it's such a loss being far away from the university so that's a big catch so this actually doesn't show too much where i was looking which is kind of like in this way so maybe that this this is kind of uh, the only option relative to uh, right near downtown. So, uh, and also, they, I don't know why Facebook doesn't put this as a, uh, why you can't do this as a regular um, satellite view. But, uh, uh, so that's kind of a difficult thing, and they always are trying to load this, and it has been crashing from time to time. 
But uh, I would say, <clears throat> you know, I mean, from a walk standpoint, as you get closer and closer to downtown, you kind of get lazier, and it's even more important to get closer to downtown as you get closer. Um, and how your walk is is super important as well. Um, and, uh, what the hill condition is. So it might be nice to do a street view, um, on some of that. So I will zoom out and maybe we can show a couple street views, but, uh, in general, uh, this is, uh, just about everything that I think I'm going to show on the, uh, Seattle side. Um, you can see that, uh, this page is pretty helpful. So <clears throat> I hope, uh, I hope you can uh, use this page and kind of see. I'm going to zoom out a little bit further and see if we can see rents in general in the whole area so you can kind of see what's going on. And you can see as you get further and further out. So there's quite a lot of really expensive stuff um, kind of heading off into here. And even on this island, you can see some uh, expensive properties. Um, but... Uh, and kind of like a sliver and i would say definitely do not even try something even though it is cheap just a major traffic jam it's better to find a small pocket where you really like it than one of these uh, fast suburbias in seattle um but this map is very helpful um and then you can see um this is the housing growth so i want to see if we can zoom in a little bit more on this and uh, see what this comes up with so there's some details in here i think um and you might be able to combine some of this data um and uh then uh, i just really like this just because i can kind of see where it is most diverse which is actually where i might want to live so actually this side would be pretty fun so it's just it's just a kind of a slight edge here so you kind of almost have to find it. and that's actually uh you can see that that's where we saw a lot of houses but it's pretty diverse as you get back into there um, which is all right and you can again this crime map is super helpful um, i'm going to see if i can zoom out a little bit more and see what's how detailed i think this only includes seattle unfortunately so this is the general kind of like crime for seattle and you can kind of see it spills out into here and then there's kind of a crime crime spot so just a couple different crime spots to think about um and then the general urban map um this is also uh great and household income so yeah so uh so let me know what you think i uh, hope you really enjoyed uh, the topic in general i'm looking for something super cheap um let me know what ideas you have i'm gonna post the links and uh good luck and uh yeah be glad to be your roommate or something uh share an apartment um, I'm looking to uh, possibly rent a boat, share a boat with some others, and just get an apartment there. I actually like living out in the country, too, uh, after living in New York and San Francisco and uh, a bunch of other places. Um, it's kind of nice to live in a <laughs> not-so-crowded place. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed everything. And, um, yeah, just let me know. Like, I mean, there's just so many areas in Seattle um i mean whether you like living close to uh, industrial stuff or right downtown um, but uh, try to find something nice and affordable and where you can make some good friends it makes a whole lot of difference and uh yeah see you